My first instrument was organ, actually. I started at the age of seven on a Farfisa organ. Um, I play Hammond now, um, but Farfisa was a little bit different in the, obviously the quality of sound. But I played left hand bass and then eventually switched to piano from there. So unlike most organ players, I started on organ first and then piano versus piano, then organ. Well, the reason why I started out with organ first was both of my grandfathers and my fathers are musicians. They were semi-professional musicians in Rochester, New York, where I grew up. And my father would often record the band that he played with on the weekends. And they had um, what sounded like an organ, but it was a cordovox, which is an accordion with ele organ electronics built into it. And I was very fascinated with that sound of that organ. And my grandfather, who had played keyboards as well as saxophone, for Christmas gave me, gave me the Farfisa organ. And that's how I started down that path of playing organ. And then, as my parents saw that I was actually interested in it, and genuinely interested, they decided, okay, buy a piano and start classical piano lessons at that point. Yes, my first paid gig was when I was 11 years old and it was playing for somebody's anniversary party. And it was just me playing by myself. I had like a little drum machine and I had the Farfisa organ and I played three hours just playing standards, you know, that I had kind of learned throughout, you know, since I had started. I mean, not very high level, obviously, not a lot of improvisation, but, you know, just kind of working my way through it. And then eventually, you know, getting 13, 12, 13, 14 years old around there, I would start to fill in in different uh, dance bands still, playing in tenor, playing keyboards, organ, and drums, and start doing that kind of thing. And that slowly, you know, worked its way into more gigs and whatnot, so. Um, an album per se, I don't think so. I think at first it was getting to see all these musicians around me. You know, was, I, I did not have extensive record collection and did not have access to the time. So just being able to go out and seeing people as being the 12, 13, 14 years old, local guys, that was definitely a big star, you know, big inspiration for me. Um, later on, getting a, as a Christmas gift an Oscar Peterson record, you know, and then soon after a Joey DiFrancesco record. You know, so it slowly trickled in, you know, those, you know, kind of things more so than just a specific album were definitely kind of led me into it. There's been many. Um, starting in my high school, I guess in my high school years, my high school band director who was an incredible pianist. A um, number of local musicians in the Rochester area, um, the saxophonist by the name of Vince Finocchio who run a jam session every Sunday. And I would go, they only had guitar, they didn't have piano or anything, and I would bring a Fender Rhodes every Sunday just so I could sit in and play two, three tunes with the band. And he was always encouraging and eventually hiring me for gigs. Um, and then I think later in life, I mean, a lot of the musicians I had worked with, you know, were definitely big influences and mentors. Um, Pat Martino's a mentor, you know, Lou Donaldson for sure, drummer Ralph Peterson, Joey DiFrancesco number of people had helped me, given me guidance, or have been inspiring in many different ways. I think working with Pat Martino has been an education in, in many different ways. I mean, first of all, the legacy that he carries in working with all the great organists, being a part of Don Patterson's group, being a part of Jack McDuff's group, working with Jimmy Smith, Trudy Pitts, Rhoda Scott, so many great ones he brings elements of that history, which these great musicians are no longer with us, or most of them are no longer with us, but he brings the spirit of them with him in his playing. And for me as an organist, to kind of tap into that and be a part of that and pick up on that vibe or energy is an incredible experience. The way he directs and leads a band. Um, one thing I had, have learned in general working with the older, some of the older masters is no matter what, when you go up on stage, you give 110% and play hard. Doesn't matter if you've been sick, if you, you know, had an eight hour drive, doesn't matter. And Pat is incredible. I mean, he's 72 years old, or he's going to be 72. He gives 110% no matter what the circumstance. I've seen him when we've come off a plane, you know, coming from the States to Europe, right to a gig. It's incredible, you know. It's, so that's, that's something definitely a lot to take away from that.
Wow. I mean, that's a long list. If there's any way I could, I'd love to play with Joe Lovano. That would be a real incredible experience for me. I would love to get to play with Jack DeJanette, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I can go on from Mike Stern. I would love to get to play with Mike Stern if possible. Um, I could I could go on for hours for a list. Um, music that I've gone, that I've recently rediscovered or, or gone back to, ironically, hasn't been jazz. It's for some reason I've been drawn back into listening to like Rachmaninoff, Chopin, things along those lines. For for some reason, one day it's just. Put on the radio, and it was um, a show, uh, some Chopin etudes, I believe, and it just, you know, kind of light bulb went off. It's like, oh, I just want to listen to that a little bit more again. So I've been listening more to that, and maybe a little bit less jazz these days. My creative process, uh, it took me a long time how to figure out how to hone being able to get into that whole headspace of a creative process. And for me, Ironically, it's away from musical instruments. It's away from, you know, my house, for example. It's just something as simply as this, I could be walking the dog in the park, where it's just me alone with my thoughts. You know, for example, I mean, I, you know, for writing charts, for example, or, you know, so songs, I'll sit down at the piano and try to think of things, and it's like, trying to get blood from a rock sometimes. But I'll be walking, you know, walking down to the store, this or that, or doing something where my mind is like, you know, I'm just in like outer space. And all of a sudden it's just by not forcing it and thinking about it, it's like, oh, there's this, and there's this. I can do this, think about this, and all these ideas start coming out. So for me, creative process ultimately comes down to just not even thinking about it and just letting random ideas pop in my head, I guess you could say. Well, the way I judge audiences and or prepare sets, uh, it, it kind of depends. The first thing is I learned from watching you know, some of the great band leaders that I've worked with, always go up with a game plan, even if that game plan changes. Uh, for example, Pat Martino has his sets laid out. Lou Donaldson has his sets laid out. When I worked with Chuck Loeb, Tim Warfield, all those people, they knew exactly what they were gonna do. But as you play the first tune, the second tune, you kind of start to get into things, you can get a feeling of what you're doing is, you know, what the audience is really enjoying, or if it's kind of going over their head, or if they're bored, or, you know, especially with organ, it's an interesting thing because, or, you know, with the Hammond organ, there's tra traditional, you know, boogaloos, you know, soulful, you know, shuffles, things like that, what people love. And then if you, they expect that, but if you go a little bit more straight ahead jazz, for example, you know, they may not, you know, maybe a little bit surprised by that. So it's kind of bringing them in and then being able to take them on that journey. But in the end, for me, it's once I have a game plan, it's reading the audience as we're playing and making adjustments as we go along, if needed. For my first experience is today at the Newport Jazz Festival. The first time I've been here in verse today. So fresh. It's very fresh. Once I was here, it's been great. The people have been great, you know, the surroundings are great. Obviously getting here, it's, and I hear the story for everybody, getting to Newport Festival was tricky from the city, you know. But it's amazing, you know, just to be around and see, running into musicians I haven't seen in a long time and hearing all different kinds of music and, and I'm glad to be here for the next few days for sure. Happy Anki.